We were both born and raised in New York City. I was an ER nurse in Brooklyn for so many years. I finally got my dream job as a police officer for NYPD that I waited years for. Everything was perfect for us. There was no thought in our minds ever uh, to leave New York City. We had two boys. Anthony was four and Marco was two years old when Gracie was born. And she was born a healthy baby. And then right after her one-year-old birthday, she started having seizures. One night I was giving her a bath and she actually was splashing the water and then her head dropped into the water. And I thought, you know, she'll just come right back up again, you know, like a kid does all the time. But she didn't, I had to grab her and lift her up. Uh, at that point she stopped breathing. Um, I called 911, speaking to the same dispatchers that I work with, telling them this is my house and someone to my house to help my kid. And then a couple weeks later she had another one. With Why is she having seizures? When she was about 18 months old, we were told that she had a really severe form of epilepsy. So the condition progressively gets worse. The seizures are uncontrolled. They're not controlled by medications, prescriptions, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Children don't usually last past, I believe, like 16 years. 20% chance that they don't make it to adulthood. When your kid is suffering and you can't help them, you feel helpless. That is the, the worst feeling ever. We didn't know if we wanted to cry, if we wanted to scream. Both of us were just numb. We kept thinking to ourselves, why God? Like, why us? All we, you know, our, both of our careers were just about serving others and helping others. And it was hard to be close to God. It was hard to see Him through all this. When you have a child with special needs or you're a primary caregiver for an, uh, a child or an adult, every day is a struggle to get up and just do it over and over and over again. It really is taxing on your mind, on your body. Definitely put a strain on our marriage. There was times where, you know, we weren't sure if we could last any longer. Grace, she was on nine seizure drugs. None of them were working. She was being admitted to the hospital two, three times a month. We had not one sliver of hope. We were just completely crushed. I was on social media and someone was talking about uh, medical treatments in Colorado and I started looking into it. And then I came to find out that the only way to obtain this treatment is to move to Colorado. And of course, in the beginning, it was like, no, we're not moving. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not moving. And then of course, Grace just kept getting worse and worse. And we flew out here one day, just me and Anna, uh, to check out you know, the situation here in Colorado. And then we were like, mm, I don't think this is for us. You know, this, this is a crazy move. Uh, and then we got on the plane and then, you know, a series of events happened on the plane that forced us to have conversations with people, total strangers on the plane that completely changed our way of thinking. It was almost like as if God came down himself and was like, do I need to bonk you on the head? Because this is what you need to do. Like he told us, this is what you need to do and I'm not gonna take anything less than that. It was just a whirlwind of events. It was like, okay, like once we got the green light, we're moving to Colorado to save Gracie. There was no looking back. God was opening doors. God was allowing us to get the right job, to live in the right neighborhood, to find the right church and the right community and meet the right physicians and, and put us in the, in the right spot in order to optimize Grace's health. When Gracie started having seizures, she would regress with every seizure, lose her language, not be able to walk, and we'd have to do really intense therapies just to bring her up back to where she was before it would take months. Um, after starting the treatment in Colorado, we noticed a big difference where she would retain all of her, the skills. The physicians in New York kept telling us that she would regress and eventually be in a wheelchair and nonverbal but that was the opposite, that was not happening. We really started to pray for God to help her communicate with us. God truly performed a miracle where she just started talking out of the clear blue. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hello everyone, I thought me and Dr. Sally 
cream tumbler, tomato, and cabbage. And now her little voice is just so clear and she's able to communicate all these words and sentences and have a conversation. I rock lemon. Wait, wait, wait. I need to write a heart for me, Marie. Oh yeah, write a heart for Miss Marie. She's growing, she's not regressing anymore. She's able to walk and ride a bike and do things that she would never do before. And yes, does she still have seizures? Yes, is her disease still really alive? It is, but her, we could tell that her little body is not suffering every day like she was before. Recently, we found out that Grace is eligible for a clinical trial, which could actually change um, her genetic mutation and be life-saving. So we're waiting for a phone call from her physician to see if she could start that. Which would be a cure for her, which yeah. is something that we never imagined that would happen. But no matter what happens, what the outcome is for Grace, good or bad, the Lord is still sovereign. And when things are out of our control, they are never out of God's control. And that's the God we serve. God has been working this whole time. Even though we don't see it, He is working. And no matter what you're going through, just know that He loves you and that He is there. If I focus on what I'm going through, if I focus on Grace's illness, if I focus on the fact that I'm exhausted and that I'm tired and I don't think I could do it anymore, I just spiral into that self-pity. If I focus on Him, He gives me strength. We would have ignored him and we would have made him our strength. I think we would have just fallen apart. There's something bigger than us. There's something bigger than, than this world. And that's him. And that's what we need to keep focused on, good or bad. We say we came here to save Grace, but in actually Grace saved us through him.